Hey guys, welcome back from the quick flight test of the FlyPro X Jaguar. This is a pretty incredible quad. We have a lot of quads coming out right now with these all-in-one flight controllers. And I've been looking at the specs and the promos for the release on this for quite a few months. And I've uh, been going over the website flypro.com for quite a while and just kind of salivating at what's going on here for the specs in this quad. This is a 190 millimeter size quad, carbon fiber frame, uh, supposed to be really fast to build. It does come in this kit form right here. You see the box to the right. And uh, I put this together in under an hour. It says on the website 30 minutes, but it's gonna, if you take your time and do it right, you're, you're gonna do a little bit of soldering for the motor wires to the all-in-one PDB on the very bottom. And then you don't have to do any other wiring uh, of your camera. You don't have to do any wiring for the PDB aside from the, the motor wires. After you did the, the motor wires, you're pretty much done. And you, you just stack the board one on top of the other. You put the screws on in the very top and you're done. Um, and you plug the camera into the side. You plug in your receiver on the side port as well to give you the wires along with it. You can use PPM, SBUS, or PWM, I believe, and uh, it's it's very, very simple to set up. So uh, in under an hour, the quickest X-Frame I've ever built, which is pretty awesome. So uh, looking at it from the side, they have a sort of an aluminum style frame on the side. You've got that Jaguar profile. You have enough space up here, I believe, to put a pretty small action cam. You could probably put one of the, the uh, GoPro sessions on top maybe with some kind of a mount. They do have extra holes up here, so you can do that. I'm gonna to try to put a run cam up there at some point, or um, maybe a Mobius cam, but I think it's gonna be a little bit long, and you'll be able to see it in the camera. So there's not quite enough room there with this antenna in the way. If we could move this antenna somewhere else on the frame, we might have a little more room there. Um, so right away, it's a really nice kit because they have 30 amp ESCs on here. Now. 30, 30 amp ESCs, integrated OSD, uh, 10 to 1 power ratio, super fast acceleration and cornering because it is an X frame, it's a true X. If you look at it straight on, it's totally a true X. So you're going to get super nimble performance out of this frame. The motors are 2205, 2300 kVs. Those are totally um, race spec for what most of us are flying right now. And uh, 2600s I've seen coming out. Are, are pretty insane too. So this also runs clean flight on here or beta flight on this flight controller. Right above the PDB is the flight controller, uh, right below the run cam swift here. I'll go ahead and pop the top for you and I'll give you a little closer look at this FlyPro tower. All right guys, there it is. That's the FlyPro tower and this is an eight in one all-in-one structure with everything included in here and uh, this is kind of really exciting for me. I like to see this simplicity and uh, way less soldering in this build. It makes the build go so much quicker. Uh, if you're like me and you have tons of quads coming through, this really saves me a ton of time. Um, if you are a guy who only has one or two quads, this is going to be fun too if you're new to the sport because this makes everything way easier and more accessible to people. These all-in-one flight controllers really save a lot of frustration and uh, anxieties about building because there really is no extra wiring needed up inside here. Everything plugs in on the side for all of your camera and VTX and your LEDs. All of that is plug and play essentially. Um, and the only soldering you have to do, like I said, is down here on the PDB, the motor wires over here, since it's nice that your ESCs are tucked up inside here and they're not out on the arms. We'll go ahead and we'll put some electrical tape on the outside of these wires to cover those up and give those uh, a little more protection while I'm flying it. But this is an eight in one tower and that's pretty amazing because they have, like I said, they have everything you need in here. You've got your transmitter and OSD up top. You can run 25 milliwatt with your friends if you're racing in close proximity or you can change it to 600 if you're out in a field and you wanna fly longer range with the the uh, X Jaguar, and that's that's kind of nice that they did that. You can also program the OSD on here, add your pilot name, and change the telemetry settings on there if you want to. It's very similar to Minim OSD, and I believe there's a video on that out there on YouTube right now for you guys, not on my channel, but uh, if you 
just do a quick search for X Jaguar, Fly Pro X Jaguar, you'll see that video. Now right underneath the OSD and VTX, we have the flight controller. And this is a Fly Pro uh, F3 flight controller. You can run beta flight or clean flight on here. Most of us are running beta flight at this point. Um, so that's, that's also really nice that you can do that. And these ESCs on the bottom, like I said, they're, they're, they're bursting up to 35 amps. So uh, these 2205 motors, they're just fine on this setup. Um, and you're gonna have plenty and plenty of power with that and not have to worry about stuff frying. Um, but the 401 ESC is nice. Like I said, it, it really simplifies a lot of things. Shorter assembly time is great and we don't have things hanging out on the arms. Um, like I said, the website says 30 minutes to build this, but it took me a little longer than that. I gotta be honest, it probably took me um, 45 minutes uh, to an hour because I was really kind of taking my time to make sure all my solder joints and everything were perfectly neat and tidy. I probably could have made my wires a little bit shorter, but uh, that's gonna be good enough because we'll, we'll cover it up with some electrical tape. Now I went ahead and I took apart that stack for you so you could see what this looks like one level at a time. And the very bottom level here, I have it lifted up above this mounting plate, this little X-frame mounting plate. Uh, it rests right on top. And this hardware down here, the long bolts come up through the bottom and will start the stack. And in between each stack, you're going to have these little red screws uh, here that will screw down on top of the post and hold each stack in place. Now what you have to be careful of, and a little tip for you if you're putting this together, is the next stack up is going to be your F3 flight controller on top of this PDB combo. And there's pins that come out the bottom of this. And this is the great side of this stack that we don't have to do any soldering um, from stack to stack for power cable or signal wires. Uh, so pretty cool. This is kind of, kind of new to me. Um, and you want to make sure that this is on there correctly when you put it on the next stack. You've got arrow on this one facing forward here and your XT60 is traditionally in the back. So it's nice to have a white arrow there facing forward. Also, you have a white arrow on this one facing forward. You wanna be careful about that because these pins have to line up with this bottom stack. So I'll go ahead and I'll put the bolts through and I'll put this hardware on top of this one and I'll place this one and then I'll show you the VTX next. Now I've got that on there with the hardware, so I'll go ahead and I'll take this flight controller and I'll lay that in on top. And I have the power connector on the camera side here so you can see it. So there we go. So you can see it from this side here. I'll tuck these wires down under a little bit. That's on this side, here we go. So can see this connector really close and I'll go ahead and bring that down and it seats there for the next stack up. So now I'll go ahead and take my next round of collars and I'll put those on top and then the next part is just adding the VTX and OSD board right above the flight controller. It's pretty simple. Now the flight controller is mounted up and I'm gonna go ahead and put this on there next and like I said, you want to make sure these pins line up because you also have pins coming out the bottom of this VTX and OSD combo as well. You can see from the side there and just gently bring it down. Don't force anything. And this one's seated. The next piece of hardware you're going to put on top is these little self-locking nuts. And be very careful when you're screwing these down um, that you don't damage any of the chips on the board. So if you're going to use a wrench on this, be really, really careful. Okay, so the stack's all built up. That was super easy to do. And I've got my boom stopper in here in between my XT60 there and the battery connector here. Now, when you plug this in for the first time, it's great if you use a, what's called a smoke stopper. It's essentially like a little XT60 plug, uh, two plugs in between each other and a light bulb there to let you know if there's any shorts here inside your frame and in your build. Uh, if any wires are touching, this little light will let you know. This one comes with a variety of little 20 amp fuses and it is kind of a drawback 
that this one has to use a fuse in there because it'll eventually burn out and you'll have to replace it. The light will come on. You'll know to put a new fuse in there. Uh, or you'll know if you have a short, but this one's available on Hobby King. You can check those out, and those are super awesome. Look up Boom Stopper on HobbyKing.com. It'll help you guys out for some of your builds, whether it's this one or another one. Uh, works on any quad, so super cool. Uh, but everything looks good here, and um, now we can move on to the next part. Now, there's a little button on the very back, back here that is not a boot button. It's actually your VTX button. So if you see these numbers, one, two, three, four, on the very top here, it'll let you change channels by pressing it once. You can see if I can get back there to it. Press it once and it'll change channels for you. Now this is accessible. It's not blocked by anything in the very back, so you can get to it. Now you can also long press it and that should change over to a different uh, A, B, C, and D for your different bands uh, and then long press again to select a band and that little green light on the back will stop flashing there. Uh, in the front is where your channels are going to go. The red light is going to go back and forth there. So pretty simple setup for the VTX and changing channels. So now you're looking at the rest of the accessories that come along with it. Uh, I also have something else over here to the side. This is a little kit for your receiver and you can run your antenna wires up these and you can mount your receiver right into the end of this and it mounts on the top of the X Jaguar. I'm not totally sure if I'm going to use this or not yet but I wanted to show you that real quick. It also comes with these 5040 style tri-props. These are 5x4s if you're looking for them. Um, also comes with a plastic coated battery strap. A lot of these battery straps are now starting to have this extra durable plastic coating on the outside uh, makes it a little more rigid in the crashes so that will you know 4s battery is a lot of weight when you crash so um, regular style velcro straps seem to just break off right at where the connection point is here for this hook you also get a carbon piece that will go over top of your battery the strap runs through either side of that and goes on the bottom of your x-frame so this will protect your battery a little more in the crash you get a variety of also different extra bonus cables for receivers. You can do that traditional PWM style uh, receiver if you want to. And you also get your programmer for your OSD on your camera. So you can put this on the back of the Swift, go in and change your brightness and contrast settings. Now let's go ahead and talk about my final opinion and my final thoughts about the X Jaguar. Would I buy this one? For $300, you're damn right I would buy it, uh, mainly because of the all-in-one flight controller and the ease of, of building this. Uh, also, you get integrated OSD, which is great because a lot of these kits in the past couple years, they don't come with OSD. You've got admin them, and that's just a lot more wiring that you have to do. Uh, or you have something new called a piggyback, which goes on the back of a camera, uh, like it's compatible with a Runcam Swift. But it's it's very limiting in, inside some of these shells for um, room. Space is very limited for X quads, uh, for X frames. So we also want to, to, to think about the weight as well. Shaving off the most weight we possibly can. Now, is this aluminum going to be durable out in the field? That's a big question. Um, I do see the possibility of these bending for me at some point, and I'm going to have to bend them back. I'm sure, but uh, for now, they're straight. And we're going to see how that holds up durability wise. So it'd be very interesting to see if these, I mean, I can see these right here just bending all the way in from a side impact. Uh, but this top structure seems pretty rigid with that carbon frame going in between. So these two points down here might be the part that bend on you. Now, uh, is that a reason not to buy it? Uh, I, I don't I don't really think so um, mainly because of the power to weight ratio on here too uh, is is pretty insane 190 size quads running 2205s are nice because they're smaller than the 210s a little less weight and you have the same power system on here which is pretty awesome so uh, very comparable to flying sort of the 180 style frames but this is definitely um, I would say 4.5 stars there are a few things I don't like about it, um, and mostly I'm going to say things that I do like about it. So 
uh, like I've been telling you in this video, most of the pros about it really, really outweigh the cons. And uh, I think it's going to be super durable, especially also with that four millimeter arm structure around each side and the arms are replaceable. So if you break one arm, you don't have to, to replace the whole underbody, which is nice. It's not a unibody style frame. So you can pop on a new arm pretty quickly. Just take this prop off here. And I'll show you the bottom. And I'll remove this stack. And it's it's pretty easy and pretty quick to take this stack off if you because it only has two bolts underneath here that hold it on. So and this is the very bottom of the quad uh, with your rubber sticker that goes on underneath here for holding your battery in place. You don't need any Velcro really. If you put your battery sticker side down on here, it'll stay in place. It's really grippy. No Velcro needed is kind of nice. Um, and, and also like the, the motor guards on the outside edge, these bumpers are nice. You can't really get a prop wrench on the outside of this uh, if you needed to hold your motor, like a motor wrench, something like what they have from Hobby King, you're not going to be able to stick that on it. But these motors are big enough that you can hold them by hand and tighten the props down. You're not going to need a motor, uh, a motor wrench to hold them still. But I've got to say that I really like this quad. If you want to check one out, you can look at the link below. I'm not an affiliate. I don't get any kind of kickbacks from it. Um, all I get is this sample quad and I'm, I'm really happy with it. So if you want to check out the X Jaguar, do it. You will not be disappointed in this one. So thanks again for watching the channel. Stay tuned for other stuff coming to drone camps. Everything is, is piling in the door uh, each week, new boxes, tons of new gear coming in, FPV stuff from around the world. So please do subscribe so you can see more. Thanks for hanging out. I'll see you on the next one.